Hello Enid, and welcome to another City Update. I'm Derek Silas, your host, and with me today is Assistant City Manager, Scott Morris. Derek, how are we doing today? Pretty good. It it's is a nice day. sunny day outside, a little windy, but I'm not gonna complain about the sun and the, or being warm <laughs> after the winter that we've had. Exactly. Uh, really looking forward to the spring. There's a lot of, uh, lot of stuff going on out there right now. Um, and I know coming up this weekend, we're going to spring forward. That's right. So we got a little bit of time to think about it, but don't forget to set your, your clocks ahead. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Speaking of spring, um, the Green Yard Waste Collection Polycart are scheduled to begin um, in April. That's right. So uh, in April, uh, starting on Mondays, that's when you can take your uh, green carts and start putting them out on Mondays for a separate pickup from the Solid Waste Department. Remember, this is unbagged, uh, small, small limbs and grass only. Uh, do not put any trash in there. This will be taken directly to a compost pile. What this does is it's such a great benefit for the people who buy the carts because now you don't have to bag your yard, you don't have your grass, you don't have to worry about any of that. And it's such a, a benefit for the city because we're not putting all of that organic waste into the landfill and taking up space. We're actually putting it in a compost pile. It goes through a process. We check the temperature, we turn it. We end up making some really beautiful compost and giving it back to the community at no cost if you want to come out there. Um, I would just, if you're ever interested in compost, I know we don't have any right now. We're going to have to be making some through the spring and summer. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in it, it, it'll be a while, but you can contact the Solid Waste Department and they will let you know if there's compost available for pickup at the landfill. So yes, in, in April, green carts go out on Mondays and remember no trash at all in those. Very good. Here's another, uh, uh, something in this area, this is more of a road closure, but concrete repairs are gonna prompt a closure on 1118 Seneca Avenue in that area. And I think there's a map that shows you the, the little uh, portion of that area that will be closed. It's not a big area, and I think it, it looks like it's just one side of the street also. So that's just to let everybody know. This is spring, so spring means time to go to the parks. That's right. And I know we're going to have some events coming up this week, starting with the Nerf Wars. Can you talk, talk to me about that? Yeah. Uh, is, that at, um, is that at Crossland? It's going to be at Champion. Champion like Park. Okay. Champion Park, yeah, bring your Nerf guns, Saturday, March the 13th. Um, I, I think this is, they did this last year. It was such a big success. Everybody loved it. And so, um, got your Nerf guns, come on out. And that ought to be a great event. I think yeah. the next day on, the, on uh, Sunday, March mm -hmm. the 14th, is the uh, Spring Break Throwdown. And yeah. so, Derek, are you going to get your skateboard out there and, and participate in that? Uh, you want to see me fall on my face? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that ought to be uh, a really cool event. Yeah. Um, that is that is after we spring forward Saturday night. So, right. Uh, but the, the spring break throwdown, that ought to be a really neat deal. And, you know, I, I've been out. Like you said, it's time to go to the parks. People are getting excited uh, about the weather and getting out. Um, there's a lot of things to do in Enid yeah. that really don't cost any money. I know I was out on the trail system over the weekend and... Got some bicycling done. I saw a lot of people out walking their dogs and jogging and different things like that. It always amazes me. I always go from the uh, the, the uh, Cleveland Trailhead and I end up going to the south across Roop and over by uh, Meadow Lake Golf Golf Course, and then it takes you through Meadow Lake Park. And uh, of course, right in that area is where they've built all of those um, uh, disc golf courses. And there's always somebody over there playing, playing disc golf when I go by. That's awesome. And I, I want to try it sometime. But that's just another thing you can do for free in Enid. All you have to do is go buy the, the discs, and mm -hmm. you're, off. you're off to a great afternoon of, of uh, disc golf. Cool. Um, I, I haven't been over there to recently and seen, but, you know, we're working on connecting the trail 
over by the carousel down to the new low water crossing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, eventually we'll be making our way up um, over, over towards the horseshoes. Mm -hmm. And then eventually after that, we'll make a trail connection all the way up to Vance Air Force Base. And so it's exciting to see that. I know the trails are popular and if yeah. we can finish up those items in the next few years, it'll be even more exciting for people as they use the trail system. Mm -hmm. So great things to do in Enid. Um, it's it's always good to be able to get out and see people see people getting active. Yep. <laughs> Going back to the spring break throwdown that's coming up Sunday, um, for those who want to register for the event, uh, participate in the actual skating event, go to enic.org slash event registration. Again, this enic.org slash event registration. There's information on the uh, parks page about it also. And spring uh, time and summertime, too, is not only for parks, but in the library. This weekend, the library hosted their ribbon cutting for the Seed Library and the Pollinator Garden, um, which was nice. They had some pictures uh, on their Facebook page. It was pretty nice of them. They had, it looks like they had a good time um, with those. They're so always doing something they're good. They're always, I, yes. I went by there last week and saw, I wanted to get their... Um, before March and see what they had up for the uh, Black History Month. And mm -hmm. so I read through what they had up for that. And I understand now, I think they've got something up to celebrate um, to celebrate uh, women and voting mm -hmm. and different things. I think they've got a display up for that. I haven't been over there and seen it yet. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe they're also, are they collecting information right now? For they are, that's the next item. They are co collecting items for the veterans and military personnel. Um, so anybody you know, out there, you or anybody you know, your family that's uh, veteran, military families, any of that, they're collecting stories to do a, something on that. That will be so neat because I, I let, I'll tell you, you know, uh, that generation that, that uh, went through World War II, there's just less and less and less of those people out there. And some of those stories are just haven't ever been told, haven't ever been shared. And uh, I know my grandfather was in the Korean War, mm -hmm. and uh, he likes to remind me that, hey, you know, you better pay attention to history because it tends to repeat itself. True. And uh, we need to learn as many of these lessons and hear as many of these stories as we can. And so I'm always interested in history. I, I just love um, hearing about just uh, what people went through and just the mm -hmm. bravery that, that people, uh, you know, the trials that they went through to bring us the freedom that we enjoy now. It's, uh, it's just very important for us to know that so we can honor those people that dedicated their lives to it. So I agree. Um, I would love it. If you've got a story, if you've got a family member that has a great story, uh, please, please contribute. Yeah. And as you mentioned before, they do have a poster exhi exhibition um, for Women's History Month there. They will be doing that um, because this is Women's History Month. You know, I believe our, I saw, I saw a picture of it. I don't know if it's been on our Facebook site or anything, but um, uh, earlier this morning, I think our service center had a picture of a bunch yes. of the ladies that work at the service center and doing various different jobs. Oh, there it is right there. <laughs> yeah. um, I know uh, that's, that's a really good thing. We've got some really hard work, really hard working women at yes, the city of Enid. And uh they don't always do the jobs that you would think that a woman right. would do. Yeah. You know, at the out at the service center, we've got female trash truck drivers, mm -hmm. female road crew workers, and they they work as hard as any man on, most of the mm -hmm. time. So great job, and yeah. uh, that's a good recognition that we have for those ladies. And we have a lot of women that are in high high positions. We have, as you mentioned, in the public works area, we have the. Uh, Stormwater and Railway Maintenance, Ashley Humphrey is a director. She's the director, yeah. supervisor for that. And then we have a CFO, <laughs> you know. Yes. Our accounting person is also uh, accountant, head accountant is a lady, so. Yeah, we'd, we be, we'd be lost without them. Oh yeah. <laughs> so today is actually International Women's Day, which is a part of Women's History Month. So we celebrate all the women uh, out there that have done, that has kept us in check. <laughs> <laughs> it helped us do everything we need to be helped with. So we appreciate that. Um, let's talk about some of our other departments. Um, we, the communications department, this department, we have launched a uh, TV channel. They're 
the, on Amazon Fire. So if you have an Amazon Fire TV or you have a Fire TV stick, you can um, add that the City of Enix channel to your cluster of apps <laughs> and watch all of these shows there. All of our promos, our PSAs, and what have you. Additionally, we have launched one on Roku. And in similar fashion, if you have a Roku TV, you can download that app or that channel app to your uh, t television and watch the city's channel. In our human resource department, we have a lot of positions open right now. <laughs> As you can see on the screen, there's about 20 positions. Some of them are seasonal, but as you can see, you can look at the closing dates, you can look at the department and the position title and the minimum compensation for those positions. We'll also be looking for three interns uh, in the one in, in environmental services, one in communications, and one in public utilities. For any of these positions, for the internships, the seasonal positions, or the other uh, regular positions, you can go to enit.org slash careers and uh, apply. There's some really good opportunities in there. Oh yeah, very good. Some good ones. Mm -hmm. And then let's go to the next department. Public Works has is one of our divisions that has several departments. Fleet Management is one. Here's a picture of Cruz um, putting new decals on his truck in the city's fleet. We appreciate all they do because they really take care of our vehicles, whether it's a police car or what have you, they take care of them. Uh, Parks and Recreation. Here are some crews that are prepping for the Champlain Kitty Pool for some fresh paint. And they'll be, they're really prepping up for that because May they'll be putting the water in the pool and then we'll be opening up soon after that. Going back, speaking of this, remember if you're a life, if you know anyone who's a lifeguard, wants to be a lifeguard, head lifeguard, still go to ena.org slash careers and apply for those positions. They're open now we need as many people we can get so those pools can be open. That is right. We need your help. If you, if <laughs> yeah. you know lifeguards, send them our way. <laughs> they were definitely on the list of people we're hiring. Yes. Um, in the stormwater and roadway department, here's a picture of crews tamping a hole on Garland Road in preparation for the patching. Shout out to them. Then we have technical services, crews creating a new sign for the Rock Island edition. And they're creating, they even do our wayfinding signs, which are on Garriott, those new blue colored signs, which is good, very good that they do those. Here we have also solid waste services. Uh, here's crews making repair to the compactor. And I'm sure you used to be over that department. <laughs> so you know that's very necessary. Yeah, you know, the, that equipment just, uh, just wears out, so. We, we have a, a refurbishing program where we, we try to weld and make repairs to dumpsters and repaint them and get them back out there. Talking about the big commercial dumpsters. Mm -hmm. And then these compactors, there's more of these in town than you would think, but a lot of our um, oh, big customers like uh, Tyson Foods or Jumbos or different places like that utilize a compactor where we deliver a big, um, it's like a roll-off, but it, it compacts all the trash for them, and then we pick those things up and empty them for them, you know, depending on their schedule. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of moving hydraulic parts, and when it gets cold outside, they have the same type issues as you would expect any mechanical system to have when it gets cold outside. So there's always something to do, and, um, you know, they're, they're exposed to the weather, so they're all, they're, uh, they always have needs and opportunity for rust to get in, and so... There's always something to do on those. <laughs> yeah, okay. The next department will be utility maintenance. Here they are uh, repairing a main on Cherry. And as you can see, man, 42 meter leaks and repairs in the last week they've done. The sewer calls, calls are six, dirt work five, water mains eight. They've been working. <laughs> wow, I was, I was really hoping that water main number would have come down over the last week. Uh, so this is three weeks in a row. They've fixed almost 30 water main breaks in the last three weeks, and these guys just continue to just work tirelessly. So yeah. um, we actually, um, Gerald and I had a, a special luncheon for this department just to thank them for all of the hard work that they've done last week and, uh, and, and just um, try to show them a little, a little appreciation for all the work that they've put in, keeping us in water. Very good. 
In our new another department is water production. In our water production department, there were 69,825,240 gallons of pumpage that week. Um, and here you can see a picture of them performing maintenance on a well sites. That's definitely more water than we've been than we normally use, but uh, with all of the main breaks and different things like that, people dripping their water and um, that peak demand has gone down, so I, I would expect even next week that we'll use less water than that. But we are getting into that season where people are starting to think about their yards mm -hmm. and think about uh, filling up their pools, and so the summertime usage is going to start ramping up. Okay. Yep. So now we're going to get into our COVID numbers just for review. Here, as you can see, the numbers are going down. So in Enid, uh, total confirmed cases 6,740, but active cases right now is 175 in the city and 184 in the county. So th that's pretty good. It's going down. That's outstanding. Last week when it dipped below 200 for the first time, the last time before last week that it was less than 200 active cases was clear back to about August the 20th. And so we've really come a long way and yeah. uh, I'm just really, I'm hoping that it continues. I know that the vaccinations are doing well. I actually got a notification that I might be eligible for one, so I'm going to check into that and make sure that I'm uh, in the uh, eligible group. Okay. Um, but I know that uh, I'll get another update this afternoon, but we have done a really good job in Enid of getting out and getting vaccinated. I know that most of our seniors in Enid, more than 50% have been had their vaccinations, and so uh, great job. Keep, keep going out there and get your vaccines, Enid. <laughs> yep. Yep. Any more? Anything else to add today? Any That'll be news? it. You know, I'm just I'm excited about the spring. I know I love to be outside. I know a lot of other people do. So, yeah. Um, be safe out there and enjoy being uh, enjoy being outside. Yeah. And join us back next week, 1:30 for another city update. Have a great day.